I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dye a sock blank and do something with core gum that I don't think I've done before and I'm very excited to give this a try. Now what is a sock blank? A sock blank is a pre-knit piece of fabric that you can dye and then unravel and so you get like a random pattern or even sometimes a gradient on the yarn based on how you dye it and so it's a lot of fun. These particular sock blanks I have pre-soaking are Knit Pick Stroll fingering weight sock blanks. They are double stranded which means that it's two 50 gram balls of yarn knit together and the yarn is 75% superwash merino wool 25% nylon and I mentioned well, I think I'm only gonna be dyeing one of them in the video the other ones for another video but we're pre soaking in my basin filled about half full with water with two tablespoons of white vinegar I didn't measure the water volume but I did measure the vinegar because maybe this will be important later I don't know. Today is a Wednesday and I'm using a guar gum mixture that I mixed last week. Now normally guar gum doesn't last that long probably because it kind of spoils if you leave it out too long. About a week later this still smells fine but I think I held on to some for like over a month once at room temperature and it was not usable. Uh, but guar gum is a thickener and I made this by dissolving a half teaspoon of guar gum in one cup of water. I'll link to another video down in the video description where I can show an example of how I mix up the guar gum using my magic bullet. So this guar gum has no dye in it yet. It is just plain. This mixture here has some Gamma True Black mixed in already. I did not measure out the amount of dye, but I used this to paint on freehand um, some beautiful palm fronds onto a sock blank from the November 2022 Chemnitz Dialong livestream. And so we're gonna leave no dye behind and use this up to do a fun experiment with our sock blank. But let's start stenciling. I am making the stenciling here a time lapse because this is not the critical point of the video. Sure, I'm trying something a little bit different as I'm applying this dye with guar gum using a foam brush onto our sock blank. And just like normal, I did roll out some plastic wrap to have underneath the sock blank so that way it would be less messy on my already protected work surface. But I painted on with the guar gum dye and black dye mixture at full strength for one of the stencils. Then I went and washed and patted dry the stencil and then I added some of the unmixed guar gum to the black dye to dilute it a little bit to make a slightly lighter version of the pattern and then again for the third version of the pattern I diluted that further. I haven't tried doing this before so I didn't know how it would turn out but again this is just the first step of my experiment today because we're gonna do something with this blank that isn't just steam setting it and so again I, I don't know what's gonna happen or how this is gonna go. The main reason to mix guar gum if in with your dyes is when the dyes are thicker they don't wick through the fabric as much. I do have a video where I stenciled maybe even with this exact one with dyes that had guar gum and didn't have guar gum and you could see how much more the dye spread out when the guar gum was not present and you get much sharper lines when the guar gum is there. Uh, you don't have to just use this on sock blanks you can use this for hand painting when you want really precise lines and you don't want the dye to move from where you've added it. So the change in color is not dramatic but it is a lot lighter over here towards the end than it is at the beginning. And even though we were diluting with guar gum and not water, it almost feels like the lines are a little bit less sharp right here right now. Partially because it's the lighter color, partially because I don't think I patted my stencil dry enough when I did that one. So I'm seeing a little bit more spread. I'm not seeing the sharp lines that I have down here. Let me zoom you in. The guar gum allows us to get this precise sharp line, whether you're stenciling or drawing. Um, otherwise, you've seen me paint things and, oh, there's a video at some point. I don't remember which video or live stream where I was painting on the countertop and the colors just moved a lot from where I was putting them originally. Uh, and so it's not moving. Normally, I would take the plastic wrap, roll this up and go steam set it for 30 minutes. 
And I don't think I've ever dyed on top of stenciled yarn. I've dyed the yarn first and then stenciled it. But in general, what I would do next is steam set this. But we're not gonna do that today. We're gonna dip dye this directly. However, I do think I'm gonna let it sit on the counter for a little bit, which will help the black set some. When we dip dye, there will likely be some spread and some spread of the color, but I don't know how much. And I think I wanna add, maybe not a lot of color, but a little bit of color into what we're gonna dip dye. So then we also get some kind of like background gradient on here. I think that would be really, really fun. In this hot dye bath, I have 16 cups of water. And I'm gonna add five milliliters of a 1% stock solution of emerald green. This is a stock solution I made for another video. And I'm gonna add a little over 10 milliliters of a 1% stock solution of royal purple. This ratio of colors may seem odd, but trust me when I say that the color that we get from the combination is beautiful. Beautiful, and I think it'll look really great with our blank. And I feel like my timing here is pretty perfect because my timer's about to go off, which means that the blank had been sitting for about 10 minutes. Okay, and now I'm carefully picking the blank up off the counter. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Peeling it up from the uh, plastic wrap, which actually there's not a lot of color on the plastic wrap beneath it. And I was trying to not have it touch itself, but it definitely was curling. Oh crap, there's no acid in here. Well, so much for it not touching itself. <laughs> oh man. Oh dear, this is a real life oops. I messed up my experiment, but you know what? Stuff happens, right? Okay, let's add. So three tablespoons of white vinegar. Turn the heat back up a little bit. And we're gonna come in, <laughs> now for real, and start dip dyeing. And so I wanted to dip dye into another color, but I also wanted um, to make sure that the other color was not very saturated because I wanted to still be able to see our design. Oh, this looks so cool. I mean, the problem with dip dyeing into another color, which on a, a Patreon behind the scenes video, this is what everyone voted to see, because uh, I had debated just dip dyeing this into just white, um, white into just no dye, just water with acid. But I really, really did want to see uh, what this might look like dipped into a color because honestly that's probably the way that I would do this normally. But I will say 10 minutes and maybe the amount of acid that we had, this is going great. This is going really great. These colors seem to be staying where I put them. I'm shocked. I feel like I'm gonna need to do a follow-up at some point where we do this using the dyes, I don't know, using the gore gum and steam setting one and dip dyeing one so we can see the difference, but I still see the stencil shape really, really well. Uh, this worked so much better than I expected. I am floored. I am completely floored. Uh, but now, since I have the cover here, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this just so that way the water doesn't evaporate too much. Uh, and we're gonna heat set this for 30 minutes. Mostly, I don't bother covering when I'm kettle dyeing because, I don't know, I, I don't wanna make the lid dirty. Um, but I had used the lid to steam set something in this pot the other day and it was right here, so why not cover it? even though it means I can't peek in and see what's going on very much. But I'll see you in 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, and oh my goodness, look at how the colors broke. We've got this purple and blue and green. That's unbelievable. And 
I don't think I can even say if the line softened much, but this worked so, so well. I'm gonna turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool for a little bit. Not too long. Okay, we're seeing a bit of yellow left, but otherwise almost all the color is in the yarn. Why don't I go ahead, because we only had three tablespoons of vinegar in there. Why don't I just add a fourth and we'll leave the blanket here to cool a bit, but I, I my jaw is on the floor. <laughs> I'm now going to remove the blank and set it aside so it can finish cooling. But I did not expect that purple and green to break like this. The purple color struck first, the blue struck later. This is stunning. Uh, there may be a hint of color left in here, but not very much. Um, so again, I'm gonna set this aside to cool so then we can wash it. It's time to look at and wash our stenciled blank. Um, I still see the stenciled lines and they look really sharp. I think that the amount of acid and time that we had were enough for things to strike, which floors me a little bit. Still, I expected some spread, but the thing is, if some of it came out into the water, we wouldn't see spread like we would have seen the spread if we were hand painting with no gore gum. The spread is probably disguised a bit by our colors here. But also, look at the colors here. I, off the top of my head, don't remember the ratios, but we're gonna, we're gonna dip dye with this combination of colors again because the purple and green mixture created like this perfect colorway that I am in love with. Just added a nice glob of dish soap, but I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding here. We are gonna see a lot of suds though. <laughs> uh, and since we did immerse this already, there's not that much guar gum to rinse out either. Um, a lot of times you really want to make sure you rinse it out because you don't want it to like dry and harden on the fabric. But I don't think that we're going to have any problem with that at all today. So I don't see any bleeding. So I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer to remove excess liquid, hang it up to dry, and we'll come take a look at the finished colorway. Here is our finished sock blank. We lucked out in so many ways with this project that it just worked when I diluted our black gore gum with more gore gum that didn't have any dye mixed in to give us the lighter colors on the stencil. But then the combination of the purple and green that we used for the dip dyeing not only broke in a gorgeous way, but the saturation of the colors is enough that we can see our design. There's enough contrast still there. A good test for the amount of contrast you might have between two different colors is to just use a monochromatic filter and see, can you still see the detail? And we can. I am definitely gonna need to do this again at a time where we go ahead and we dip dye one blank and steam set one blank to see if any of the color that was on the blank spread out to see if we can see that color going onto the white background or if we still have the contrast there because we can't tell looking at this blank if the colors that we are seeing here uh, with our stenciled pattern versus the background are due to the color, the green and purple that we mixed together, or if we got a little bit of black in there as well. And so then that was also contributing to the background. So we didn't really answer any questions today, at least not completely anyway, but we did create a fantastic blank. I suppose there is one conclusion we can make. Uh, the amount of acid that I had pre-soaked this blank in was enough with the true black acid dye for that color to start to strike where I've placed it. And so even adding it to water after that didn't really disrupt the pattern. So we did learn that, that room temperature, everything was good enough there. For all, I really love the effect that we have here. I think that I would still prefer to add the base color and then stencil on top of that, just because then you can control 
how intense your colors are with your stencil. If you don't see enough contrast, you can add more pigment. And you have that level of control there that we didn't have because we didn't know what we were gonna end up with. However, it was super fun and I love taking risks and trying new things. And I also need to add that just because this worked with black, with true black, with the amount of acid we had, this does not mean that it would work with every yarn base and every dye color. Some colors we see at room temperature when we add a little bit of acid, the yarn just sort of soaks them up immediately. Other colors it doesn't. So there is some variety that we can expect there. Let's take a peek at the wrong side of the blank. You can see our stenciled pattern coming through no matter the intensity of the black dye or I guess the concentration of the black dye but it isn't as clear or as sharp as it is on the right side. And so we will end up with some speckling and modeling from the pattern, not just because where the black dye is and isn't, but in those individual areas. When we take a look at the stitches, you can see some reverse speckling going on in there because of the resist that we had from just the yarn being knit to begin with. And so that will also add some speckling to our project. I am not going to unravel this blank today because, well, I think it's beautiful and I want to be able to list it in my shop as is. But I do want to note that this worked so well and this as a blank is so gorgeous. It almost is something that would be worth doing on, say, a scarf that you knit to then apply this design after the fact to have that stand. I mean, can you imagine this on like a silk scarf and just having this pattern? This just looks gorgeous. And I'm not confident enough to try to go and make designs on like an actual silk scarf, but it's something that is worth thinking about. Uh, there is art that goes into the blank, even though the plan is to eventually unravel it. But I will let my customer either unravel it themselves or whenever I list uh, intact sock blanks in my shop, there is always an option for me to unravel it for you. It'll take a few more days for processing uh, and it costs a tiny bit extra, but I'm happy to unravel it uh, for you. And so that option will always be on the listings. Sometimes it's really fun when we do a project and we have more questions than answers because, well, I have a lot of questions. Do you have a lot of questions too? So if you would like to see me explore this more, please subscribe to the Chemnet Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and give the video a thumbs up. I absolutely already have plans to do another stenciled sock blank later this year in a video where I will be unraveling it as part of the video. And if you know, you know, that's all I'm gonna say about it right now. But I'm excited to film that in not too long. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.